All right, today we're going to learn how to use Arduino to control a motor. Um, Arduinos can't power motors if they're drawing too much current, so we have to use a transistor as a switch and a diode to protect the circuit from the motor as it continues to spin once we turn it off. Because uh, motors can also be spun and create electricity, create electricity as like a generator. So what we're going to do is go to learn, then we're going to go to circuits, then we're going to go to projects, and we're going to go down to show all Arduino. And we're going to go to motorize wheel, this one here, because it uses a DC motor in this project. Now, this project has four lessons to it. You need to do one, two, and three to get the credit for this assignment. So let's start with introduction. And then it actually progresses through the next two lessons as we get done with the first one. All right, so we'll go pretty quickly. If you um, need to stop it and and start this video, you can do that. So uh, make sure you read everything over here to learn all about the transistor. But you'll see uh, today we're gonna be using a new component called a transistor to control the motor. Um, it's a little bit different than the LED that we've used in the past and a little bit different than the servo that we've used in the past. Um, so here we go, and resistors. So um, motors require current that the Arduino output pins cannot supply. It says that right there. So I definitely recommend you guys read through this. Uh, motors can, can generate their own current, kind of like uh, a generator. And this process could damage the circuit if we don't plan for it. So we got to do a couple things to make sure we plan for it. So here is the uh, diagram that electrical engineer might draw up. Uh, here's the Arduino and all of its uh, pins, the analog pins, the digital pins, the pulse width modulating pins with the little uh, prefix before it. Uh, we've got a push button over here. We've got a 10k ohm resistor right there. We've got a 9 volt battery over here and then we've got a diode and a transistor here that's a MOSFET uh, transistor. So there's different types of transistors. This is the one we're using today. I don't want to get too much into that. A diode is very much like an LED. Electricity can only flow one way through it. It cannot flow the other way. Okay, and that's helpful because what's going to happen here, the electricity is going to come out of the battery, go to the motor. It can't go this way. It can't go this way and get to the MOSFET uh, because the diode is there. But if the motor continues to spin after we, after we turn off the electricity, then electricity will can balance out and flow back around this way um, and not, not go to the MOSFET. OK. All right, so here's what we got to use. Not too many things and the motor. So you can see down here, this is what it's going to look like when we're done. We've got a 9 volt battery providing current to this side of the uh, breadboard. We've got the Arduino providing 5 volt uh, electricity uh, current, 5 volts of electricity to this side. Uh, we do cross over with the ground, so that happens, but not the positive. We don't want that much electricity over here. Nine volts is too much, so for these smaller components. But the motor is on this side, and it does need nine volts in order to power it correctly. All right, let's get, keep going. Please read through all this. Uh, this talks about the transistor and how it works. So you've got a source and a drain and a gate. Um, so make sure you look at that. Make sure you understand that the Arduino is, um, can provide 40 milliamps of current but that's not enough really to power a typical motor, a DC motor. 
you can buy smaller motors that would work, but not, not in this case. Okay. It says that right here. And this is our case. This motor that we're using today is going to uh, need more than five volts. So we need to provide another power source for it. All right. And then this shows just the one side of the circuit with the nine volts. And it talks a little bit about using the transistor through the uh, gate, the drain, and the source. So this is coming from the battery. Electricity is going to go to the motor that way. But we can use a signal from the Arduino to close that gate or close that switch to allow that to happen. So it's pretty interesting. And it talks about that, just like turning a switch on. OK, oops, right there. All right, so this is our motor. Um, this They have a, a magnetic field around them. Um, and so when the motor is provided current, the coils inside create a magnetic field. This field causes the shaft to spin. Motors are pretty cool. And we can make a simple motor with um, some, some easy parts to get. We can look at that later. All right, now the diode. It's going, to, it's going to be talking about the diode here. It's talking about the back voltage. Please read through that to fully understand or to better understand how this diode is protecting the circuit and the MOSFET from getting too much current. When we turn it off and the motor is still spinning because it just has inertia, you know, it doesn't just stop right away. All right, so that's uh, the first part of the introduction. The introduction is just about teaching you about stuff. So it's very important to go through that and learn what it has to tell you about the new parts we're talking about today. All right, and then here you go. It takes you right to the next lesson, setting up the circuits. So we continue. And so now we're going to build it. Um, and it just it walks you through it. It gives you some pictures of what it's going to look like. So we can connect the five volts right here to that, change its color to red. We can see we're going to connect also the ground pins to the breadboard, to the rail of the breadboard, to this rail. We'll put that there and change that to black. Okay, you can come up here and change it, or you can use uh, one and two which is what I just used to change the color. All right, and then we continue on. All right, it says add a push pin across the middle gap. So here's the middle gap right here. We're gonna create a push pin. So here's a push pin, a push button, sorry. Push button. Let's try again in here. It doesn't have to be an exact same number, but if you like to do it that way, um, you know, take a look at the picture that they have down here and put it in the exact same one. You can see they have it in uh, five and seven, five and seven, but it doesn't really matter. I have mine in six and eight. Okay. Then it says finally connect the right side of the button to the ground rail. So over here, the right side of the button is going to go to the, no, oh, why does it say right side? Connect the left side of the button to the power. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the right, uh, left side of the button to power. So we're gonna come down here to there and I'm going to click, click, there we go. And change that to red. Um, and then over here, we're gonna connect it with a 10 ohm resistor, 10,000 ohm resistor. Now, you guys know that this resistor is not 10,000 because you know the color codes of brown, black, red. Um, so that brown is uh, one. Black is zero, so it's 10, but red is one zero. So this is only um, 100, or actually with the red is two. Yeah, black, uh, brown is, is one, so red is two. So you've got uh, 10 and then two zeros, so that's a thousand. Right here it says 1K. We need 10K, so we gotta come up here and change it to 10, and you're gonna see that the uh, brown and black stay there, but now we're at yellow. So um, again, the colors are red, orange, yellow. So that's again, brown is one, 
black is zero, so that's 10. And then um, red is two, yellow, and um, orange is three, and yellow is four. So 10 and four, maybe it's, maybe it's yellow. I mean, maybe it's orange. All right, anyway, we need it to be 10,000 or yeah, 10K ohms. So that's what we got. And this is called a pull down resistor. Um, again, this is, this is used to make sure that the current uh, is not being caused by any interference, that the current that's going to go to this pin two, which is our input pin, we'll set that up later in the code. Um, that's gonna be a three green wire, no, four, oh, shoot, five green. Um, so just to make sure that, you know, with motors and that kind of stuff, with the magnetic field that they have, that there's not some type of current being generated through the wire accidentally. That it is only current that when pushing this button, it's current coming from here to here that's going to the wire. This is going to help make sure, going back to ground here, that the electricity going through here is in true a true push of the button. All right. Just one thing that you have to do sometimes to protect, well not to protect, just to make sure that your circuit always works the way you want it to work is to add a pull down or a pull up. This one's a pull down. If you switched it around, it'd be a pull up. And that's, you know, get more into the video than what we want to. All right, so again, moving on. So now we're gonna hook up the nine volt battery. So you can again, look at the picture and see what we have to do. Uh, and you can also read the directions over here to see what you have to do. So we're gonna nine volt battery. I'll come over here and search nine volts. Okay, that didn't work the way I thought it would. Let's try just the battery. Doesn't like to select. There we go. I saw it. There we go. So I'm going to bring that right here. And we're going to connect this side to there, pushing on two to get that to be red, and pushing there, and one to get it to be black. So then that's powered. But we also need to connect these two because there's going to be situations you'll see later with the diode that we need to run electricity back this way. So we connect the ground. Uh, electricity might be coming from the battery or might be coming from the Arduino and it's, it needs to go somewhere, um, but it's kind of cut off. So we need to go, it's actually coming from the battery. It needs to go back to the ground of the Arduino. Anywhere you can get back to ground is good. All right. The next we're going to do is place the transistor. So the transistor, let's see what choices we get when we type in transistor. Oops, it doesn't let me to select. I just have to delete. Transistor, there they are. And so we're going to want either this one or this one. So we need to make sure we're getting the right one. Let's take a look. Read through this. Make sure. Let's see what we're doing here. Oh, there you go. NMOS. So that's what we need. And this one. Take a look again. Make sure it looks right. Yep. That one looks like that one. All right. So let's drag that in. And it talks about what pin they're putting it in. You just need to make sure that all three pins are on this side. And so we can put it right there. And then a little, it's nice with the Tinkercad, it tells you which one's the source, which one's the drain, and which one's the gate. Um, usually, if you can see, really hard to see, but maybe on your computer, you can see there's also letters here. So if we were in the classroom, that's how you would know which one was the gate, which one was the drain, which one was the source. Typically, the middle one's the drain. Okay. All right, so we got that set up and we need to wire it. So let's take a look at, um, it says the digital pin nine is gonna be our gate. So we're gonna take a wire from here, any one of these holes, 
to nine. And what color did they use just to be consistent? They used purple. So we'll go up here and change it to purple. There we go. And again, colors of wires don't really matter. It just helps us to see them. And then we have our, our source of electricity is coming from here. Like to me, let's see. Yeah, we've got a red wire going to the ground here. I'm not sure that that's right. But we'll do what they say. And let's see. It says connect the source pin and transfers it to the ground rail. Yeah, that's right. All right. Just make sure you follow directions. Seems weird that that's red, but. If you want to become an electrical engineer and understand why that is, then there you go. But right now we just need to, at this level of our understanding, we just need to know that that's how, it, how it's done and that that's how it works. Okay, now we're going to bring in the motor. So attaching the motor and providing um, you know, energy to the motor through the MOSFET. There we go, like that. So, oh yeah, now I see why. Okay, makes sense. This is the drain coming. This is the current coming back around. All right, into the negative. And it has to go back to the negative this way. All right. So let's connect that. Let's find our motor. I think, I keep forgetting, I can't select. I just have to back base. See, there's a couple different motors. We're going to use this one today. There. Maybe zoom out a little bit. There we go. And hook this up as they show it. So again, let's see, that's terminal two, terminal one. Um, basically, if you switch up these terminals, it'll run in a different direction. The motor will spin in opposite directions. So that's kind of a neat feature to know about. That if you wanted it to spin a different direction, it'll only spin, uh, it'll spin a different direction if we change this wire to be the one going to the MOSFET. And this one, It just says somewhere over here. And they want it to be, it looks like blue. Again, colors don't really matter, except to help us understand what's going on. Or someone else. And it looks like, let's just check. Make sure I did that right based off of the picture. Looks good. But also you could read through this and it'll tell you, attach the red motor terminal to the top power rail which is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. All right, you see it's connected to the positive side of the battery. Okay, then we need to connect the drain, connect the black motor terminal to the middle pin of the transistor, the drain. So here is the drain. And we're gonna connect that to there and also make it blue. Okay. Let's double check. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And again, remember this line is connected together. So electricity flows through these wires because they're connected on the same row in the breadboard. Okay. So read through those if you're not quite sure if you did it right. Uh, look at the picture if you're not sure if you did it right. And attaching the diode is our last thing that we're going to be doing here, step seven out of seven. So let's go over here and find our diode. There it is. Put that so that it can flow back that way. So connect the cathode of the diode. So remember diodes, just like LEDs, electricity only flows in one direction. So if we need to spin these, we're going to hit R, spin this around on the keyboard, click R. So the stripe side of the diode is going to connect to the red terminal. Okay, right there. Mm -hmm. There's the red side, red side, 
right there. And it says, it may seem backwards. In fact, it is. Current will not be able to flow this way, but it will be able to flow this way um, through the diode. Um, the diode will help prevent any back voltage generated by the motor from going back into your circuit, going back into here. Um, so it's going to flow the opposite direction we want it to flow. So it'll flow that way. OK, anyway, talked about that already. Got that set up. So now we have to write the code. So we can continue on to the third and final lesson required for this, for this assignment today. All right. So we have to kind of do uh, some variables for this. The switch pin is set to two. That's the, what the switch is connected to. The motor pin, what's going to control the motor from coming on is going to be motor pin nine. And then we're going to have a switch state just telling us uh, is the switch on or not. So we're just going to uh, come over here. A couple of things you could do. You can copy this, control C, come into the code. And this is where you're going to define your constants. Um, you're going to define your, your variables. So right at the very top, and we can just paste that in. Okay, maybe not. There we go. We did not copy this. How can we not copy that? Control C. Well, let's copy it. I'm going to have to paste or type it. Yep, it looks like it. I'm going to have to type it. So make sure you do it correctly consistently there enter another one you could start copying that at that point if you wanted to but it's just easier my hands are on the board just to keep typing equals nine this is gonna again tell the Arduino that we're gonna use the nine pin for the motor to control the motor you just have to have a variable, not a constant variable, that could, it's going to switch. It's going to go from being uh, zero and one, one and off. And so depending on when a user might push the button. There we go. Okay. Continue on. Um, then we're going to get to the void setup part. So again, these are comments. These the computer doesn't know what these are uh, with the forward slash forward slash there. We can use them or get rid of them, whatever you'd like to do. In this case, I'm gonna get rid of mine. And I'm gonna type in the void setup. So void all lowercase setup. Parentheses and then a curly bracket to open it. And a lot of times, oh, not this time, a lot of times in the Arduino code, when you do the first curly bracket, it'll create the closed curly bracket. Uh, anyway, we're going to set up our pin mode. Remember the pins, the digital pins in the Arduino can be inputs or outputs. So for our motor pin, it is going to be the one that controls the motor, it's going to be an output. This is all caps. I can't see that here, but one way I think I can make that. Nope. Can I make that bigger? If I can see all that. Nope. I just have to scroll over here. But I knew it was output because I know how we're using the motor to send electricity out to the transistor to tell the motor to turn on. Okay. And then you can copy that or just type it over. Pin, or pin mode. Basically sending the pin for the switch pin spell it exactly the same as what you did in the variable otherwise the computer doesn't know what it is to input and this is because when someone pushes the button it's going to send electricity into the arduino so that's an input so that's our setup everything's set up and so we need to close it with the curly brackets there we go then we're going to do our void loop down here. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's going to show us on the next page. And again, curly bracket open. 
and go to next. Okay, so here you can see what we have. It says copy the code. Uh, let's try this one more time. So right click, copy, there we go. And then I come over here and it looks like I didn't copy the V, so I'm gonna delete that. Right click and paste, let's see if that works. Oh, it did. Um, so it doesn't hurt to type it in, but you can copy and paste with right clicks. So void loop, again, curly bracket open, switch state equals digital read. This is saying, hey, set this variable to whatever the Arduino is reading from the switch pin, which remember we set the switch pin up here to be uh, pin number two. So we could just write two in here, but then any time that we're trying to get a read from that, we might have in bigger codes, we might have switch pin or switch state several times down here. And just having this set up here allows it to be written once. And so if we change this and we rewired it for some reason, and we wanted to change this, we could change it here and it would change it any place that we use switch pin in the code. We would have to do it over and over and over and over again. So that's what's nice about creating variables like that. Could you just write a nine in here? Sure, because we're only using it once in this one. Could you just write a, uh, a nine in here? I'm sorry, switch pin would have been a two, sorry. Could you just write a two in here? Yes. Could you write um, a nine here? Yes. You do not need to use the variables technically, but it is good practice to set up those things as variables. So if you have larger code, uh, you would not have to do it over and over again. I mean, this is kind of that way. You got motor pin here and motor pin here. If you uh, switched what pin your motor was on, let's say you switched it to uh, 10 or 11, then you could just change that to 10 or 11 and it would automatically change both of those to, to whatever you have of that um, rather than you know, have to go in here and change this 10 if you go to 10 here uh, to 11 or, and then this one also from 10 to 11 you just have to change it once up there so that's what's nice about having constant variables all right that's the entire loop so you can see the curly bracket is here now we did do an if if loop so basically it says if the switch state is on or high then we have another curly bracket and then another closed curly bracket. And then we have an else. So if it is high, then turn the motor on to high. That's what that says, write out current to turn the motor on up to high. Else, if no one did press the switch, then leave it as low. So else, and then another curly bracket open, another curly bracket close. So make sure your curly brackets are done and complete. This curly bracket, goes all the way down to here. We have open curly bracket, open curly bracket. So now you have two open, then you have one closed, and now you have one open, then you have two open again, and then you close that one. And so now you only have one that's still open, and so you close that one. And so it's just you try to make sure you follow that because that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is not having their curly brackets in the right spot or or deleting one. Okay. So pay attention to that. Now um, you know, this is, is saying go ahead and start the code and see if it works. If we push the button, the motor should start to spin. And you should see an RPM thing there, revolutions per minute. You see barely moving, but it's moving. Uh, actually, it's moving a lot, but it doesn't look like it's moving much. And if I release the button, then it slows down. But it doesn't slow down right away. And that's what could create that back current. And that's what the diode is taking that current. And, and redirecting it so it doesn't go into our circuit over here. Okay, so again, push it, starts, stops, starts, stops. It starts when it's high and turns the motor on, sends electricity out of nine, makes this turn it on and sends electricity to the motor. Rather, or it lets electricity go through the motor. Rather, when it's not pushed, no current's going into here, so therefore no current is going into here. Therefore this is closed, therefore current can't flow back through here to the battery. And so that, that transistor creating a switch, acting as a switch, okay. Um, so again, just learning about transistors, uh, they're very useful machines. Uh, a lot of things in the computer are transi transistors because they're switches. They can be turned on and off, and um, 
we could it said it talks about um using a potentiometer in an analog input and using the cost with modulator pin nine to actually turn the gate on and off uh, so that's something you could do to try to make the speed of the motor variable that's kind of an interesting thing to think about if you want to play with that you can um, I don't know how I would know that you did that and give you extra points. So there it is. That's the end of uh, lesson three of this project. And that's what you have to get done today. You can assemble the pinwheel, but you guys don't have that. You're not creating this. If we were in classroom, maybe we would. But that's all we have to do today. So you don't need to hit continue. And it saves automatically. I'm going to continue just to make sure that you go one more step and everything kind of gets updated and saved. It's not a bad idea.